At least 500 people are now dead following that massive blast this week at a hospital in central Gaza. Mm -hmm. One of many stories, patients, healthcare workers, and people seeking shelter were inside in the time, including children. Joining us now is Dr. Margaret Harris. She is a public health doctor and spokesperson for the World Health Organization. Dr. Harris, we appreciate you being with us, especially during this time when you have teams right now in Gaza from the World Health Organization on the ground. Can we first just talk about how your staff is doing and what their situation is right now? Thanks for asking, Audrina, because they really have been through what could only be called a living hell, because along with everybody else, every minute they're in danger and their families are in danger, and but they still are going out every day and doing what they can. And one of the things they've been doing is really scrounging, uh, searching the markets for anything that could be used by the hospitals providing and they did manage to find some anesthetics and cortisone to keep uh, the major hospitals going to do 50 surgeries that sounds like a lot normally but when you've got hundreds of people coming in with severe injuries those 50 surgeries have already been done so we are desperately waiting for the crossing to open so we can bring in more supplies uh, doctor, you're joining us from overseas right now. I just wonder, um, just offhand, how, how many times do you call, uh, you, you go to places that are, that are always, you know, quagmires in one sense or another. Uh, how many times have you qualified them as a living hell? Well, I've, I personally have been to many of the places that people would consider difficult, like Afghanistan, Ukraine, during, you know, the beginning of the, the war there. Um, uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo, which has got conflict going yeah. on all the time in the areas we work. But this is different, and everybody is saying this is different because no one is safe. It's continuing, and, and, and nobody has many of the things we do can't be done, like simply bringing in supplies and helping and having humanitarian access. That's not been available in this hmm. horrible conflict. Interesting. And Dr. Harris, you mentioned this just a bit ago about the need for the safe passage for citizens, also for that aid, much needed resources and treatment. Mm -hmm. We talk about this, but we're he we're so far removed from what's happening. Mm -hmm. Can you really discuss with us and talk to us about the, the need for this when it comes to treatment and efforts on the ground for your staff? So just imagine if you're a healthcare worker and you've got a child that's just been brought in with a limb blown off, mm -hmm. uh, but you don't have pain relief. And, 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 and as any parent knows, all you want to do when your child is hurt is to comfort them and help them. You don't have anesthetic. You may have to be sewing up a child. These doctors are, are telling us this, that they're sewing up people on the floor with no anesthetic just to stop the bleeding, just to keep them alive. So you are asking people whose only desire is to help, whose only desire is to save lives, to be doing it under the very worst circumstances and doing it in a way they would never consider doing normally. And we lost healthcare workers in this latest strike. Did that put a bigger strain on an already very strained, difficult situation for your staff? You're so right to ask that question because mm. when we talk about supplies, normally we're talking about bandages and anesthetics, but we also now are losing, as, as somebody said, consuming health workers. Uh, wow because they are being killed. They're either being killed while the strikes happen on the hospitals, and we've documented more than 50 strikes on hospitals, mm -hmm. but uh, they're also happening when their buildings are, are struck or when they're trying to come to work. Public health doctor and spokesperson for the World Health Organization, Dr. Margaret Harris, uh, we appreciate your work. We appreciate your team. Uh, bless you going forward. Thank you for what you do, and thank you for being with us this morning. Thank you, and I thank all your viewers for wanting peace in this world. Mm -hmm. Yes. Indeed we do.